hello all you wonderful people out there in YouTube land. Welcome to the Texas Special YouTube channel. And on this final installment of the 8 Days of Christmas video series, we will be taking a look at this Lionel Northern Pacific Standard O Square Window Caboose. Now, this is, as you can tell, your standard Lionel box. To get the caboose out, we will just open up the tab on the end of the box, open the tab on the inside of the box, and remove the cardboard cradling on one end. And out comes the caboose, wrapped in a protective cellophane wrapper. Pull the caboose out of the wrapper and there she goes. Now this caboose also features interior illumination and an operating smokestack. This was actually a gift from a friend in Beaumont. Uh, an HO scale model railroader. If you've been watching the channel for a while, then you've probably seen the video I posted on his railroad a while back. Uh, a gentleman of the, by the name of Stephen Barkley, who models Northern Pacific in Montana in the 19 about 1960. I'll be sure to put a link to his video in the description. You want to check it out? Cool. You don't? Cool. Kicking this off, you can see we have the arch bar style trucks with the frictionless bearing journals. You see some separately applied little classification lamps here on the end, marker lamps here on the end, separately applied grab irons there we go that's better uh, separately applied grab irons here here on the end which I'll show you a little better and along the top of the cupola the toolbox or storage box is here these doors actually open. They don't really show anything inside, but this door here does open. It does slide. And we'll close it back real quick. We look at the underside of the caboose. And that allows you to see the service and emergency reservoir detailing, a little bit of underframe detailing, a air piston, and I'm guessing that's supposed to be the air brake, you know, the triple valve or another piston. What that's supposed to model, I'm not sure, but that's the piston, that's the service and emergency reservoir. You can see, based off of the design of the trucks here, uh, these are operating knuckle couplers, and these little plates here, they pull down when activated by a Lionel uncoupling track section to pop the knuckle open. There is no tab on the sides to manually open these couplers, so it's straight with this. Here we see the roller bearing, the pickup roller for the, uh, the smoke unit and the lighting. And right here is an on-off switch for the smoke unit. So you, this is the off position, you push it down, that's the on position. And that's pretty much everything going on on the underside of this car. So we will look at the 
end of the caboose here. We have a nice shot of the separately applied ladder here on the end, separately applied hand railings. You have the air valve, which these cabooses had, most every caboose had, for when the train was shoving, if you had to make a shoving move, the conductor or rear brakeman would be back here and if he needed to stop he could control the air the air brakes himself from this little valve right here you have the separately applied handbrake wheel with some nice chain detailing right there and of course the operating knuckle coupler and a couple of separately applied grab iron details here 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 and here the door is cast onto the body of the car and does not operate. Furthermore, you'll see there's actually some nice, well, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but there is some nice non-slip tread detailing here. It's not a see-through grill, but it's, it's simulated as it is, as well as on, oh no, the steps are smooth and they are one solid piece. Looking at the other side of the car, here you have again the toolbox and you can see some tools molded inside there. You have a little spike maul, a little shovel, and we'll close that back. Again, this door, this side does not open. You have another marker lamp right here. You know, fairly good detailing on the trucks. They're not sprung trucks. They're uh, you know, they're solid castings. They are metal. The body of the car and the underframe of the car are plastic with the trucks, wheels, and axles, and couplers being metal. You have some very nice lettering, very well done lettering. I will say that the paint on the Northern Pacific logo, the white, does seem to be a little faded, but that's fine. And of course you have the built by Lionel January of 1992 right here on the rear of the caboose. And it's on the same spot on the other side of the caboose. The, this end right here is identical to this end. The only exception being of course that the smokestack and uh, the relation of the cupola in relation to this end rather than this end. But otherwise identical. We'll look at the top side of the car here, and you can see the caboose does not have the typical smoke jack, you know, the little T-shaped uh, exhaust pipe or smokestack, whatever you want to call it. Instead, it's just, you know, a little opening here. You have some nice cast-on detailing, wood grain detailing for the cast-on brakeman's walkway here and here alright so first things first we're gonna turn on the smoke unit to load the smoke into the smoke unit is the exact same methodology you would use with a regular locomotive or uh, like any other uh, smoking freight car, say the Lionel uh, hot box reefer. You'll take model train smoke fluid, and the stuff is pretty much universal. There's not really a whole you know, a model, a smoke unit on a model train is a mo is a smoke unit on a model train. There's not a whole lot of variation. So, thankfully, smoke fluid is, for the most part, is smoke fluid. Take the smoke fluid, put a few drops into the stack. Careful not to overfill it. And then you apply the track power. And once the smoke unit has warmed up it will start smoking.
and there you have the smoke. I'm going to add a couple of more drops just to kind of help it out. But that took all of about 45 seconds for that smoke unit to heat up and actually start producing. So we will conclude the boring, well, maybe for some of y'all boring, talky portion of this review and start the fun part. I have a manifest freight made up on here on Main Track 1 of the South Texas Railroad. And we will run this guy behind my MTH GP30, uh, Alaska Railroad GP30. Unfortunately, I don't have any Northern Pacific power. I doubt that's likely to change. But, eh, we do what we can with what we got. There is one feature of this uh, caboose that I didn't neglect to specify, but you'll figure it out here shortly.